Let's take a look at the new Smart Adjustments tool in Capture One. I've got an image here of Maggie that I did during her headshot session. And um, what we're gonna do is the, the Smart Adjustments, it's, it's another tool that you can put in any one of your tool tabs. I've got mine in my standard Adjust Tool tab here. And what we can do is after we're done making our adjustments, setting our exposure and, and everything, let's get the bat back to where I want it, right there. Um, you can see this is how it came out of camera, very orange, and this is uh, how I want the image to look. You can see there's a difference there. Obviously not the same image, but uh, one shot right after the other. So let's pull this back up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the image that I want after I've made all the changes that I want to it. Then I am going to click set as reference. And now you can see it sets that image as reference. Now I can select white balance and exposure. And then what I can do is if I come here to the next image, then I can hit apply. It's that simple. Uh, I can do that to a bunch of images, hit apply, and it's going to take the exposure and the white balance from this reference image and apply it to subsequent images that I want to apply it to. And that's really great. That's really makes things a lot easier. What I'm really excited about with this tool is that it, right now it only works on images where there are people's faces. So that tells me that Capture One is working on facial recognition software. You can't use this tool on still life, unfortunately, because it is looking for faces. And what it does is if we take an image like this, that's completely unrelated to this source image, and then we hit apply, it is going to match it. It's going to match the white balance and the exposure to that source image so that I can have consistency across my entire shoot that's matching. You can see here are the values 212, 182, 180, 191, 212, 188, 189, 195. It was very close. Now we can take a bunch of images from this session select all these images, hit apply. It takes that look that I've applied, that I've set for that reference image, and then it applies it across the uh, rest of the images. Now, I have tried doing this to an entire shoot at once, and it really kind of chugged and uh, took a long time. So my recommendation right now would be to uh, not do this uh, across an entire session at, at once. So you can see here, here's an image that uh, will click apply. This one, different look, different time, but like it's getting us very close. But the great thing is we don't have to keep it there. If we feel like, oh, that's too cold, I can warm it up a little bit. For me, this image is uh, at least a, has a great starting point that I can continue to work on if it becomes one of the images that I'm working on in this session. Now I'm gonna come back up here to my reference image. Now what you can also do is save all these adjustments as a style. So if I come in here and now I have all these adjustments that I can select from, light fall off, even on the lenses, lens, lens corrections, even the composition, I can save all of this as a style. And then uh, what I could do, let's save this as a temp style. And then I can come down to another image. And then when I come over to my styles, uh, I can hit temp and it's made all the adjustments right there. The crop obviously not great, so I just adjust the crop and I'm good. This has uh, done exactly what I needed to do. But of course, when you're setting the style, when you're saving that style, you don't have to select everything. You can say, okay, well, I might be shooting different lenses um, and I don't want these uh, effects. I don't want the composition. Um, and uh, I want everything else set as a specific style. So if you have a setup that you use in your studio and it's always the same and um, you could set that as a style, so even on other shoots, you could import that. I would caution against that. Um, what I would definitely caution against is uh, using white balance and like, saving white balance and exposure in a style, um, mostly because uh, you are going to be working with people who have different skin tones. And saving a style 
that is based on the skin tones of, you know, uh, a young white woman is not going to translate well to um, uh, a black man or an, an Asian woman or just a, a person of, of I just think that it's it's not going to be good for anyone other than that specific person. Your best bet is just to make a, a reference image and then just apply it on on the images that you're going to edit or or apply it on a bunch of images and then go through your culling process and and save yourself some time. This is this is going to be a massive time saver for you, um, and uh, I'm very excited about this tool. Uh, you can see just like it's it's magic to me. I love the fact that I don't have to go in and uh, edit. Uh, every single photo and color correct every single photo. Once my client has done their selections, I can go back in and refine those final images. Anything that I can do that can speed up my workflow is very much appreciated. Let me know how you're gonna use it. This feature and the culling feature were literally designed with wedding photographers in mind. If it can recognize the face in the photo, then uh, it can do the work. So let me know what your experience is uh, with this feature in the comments below. And uh, let me know if this video was helpful. If it was helpful, hit the like button. Um, that, that helps me out, that helps you out. It lets YouTube know that you wanna see more videos like this. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.